Welcome to DYC MMA and Boxing. Lucas Matisse fought Emmanuel Taylor, who was the faster fighter. Um, good skills, good movement, good jab. So the question is, what do you do if you're not a fast fighter and you don't have athleticism? Well, Lucas Matisse answers that by throwing his right hand right over the shoulder of Emmanuel Taylor. It's equivalent to switching lanes on someone's blind side. He even does a good job throwing it over the jab of Taylor. So Taylor had a hard time seeing that punch coming all fight long. He was just getting hit. Um, this is beautiful. He throws it straight down the middle and then over the guard. He had he threw it in so many different angles that it was very hard for Taylor to even see the punch coming or to evade the punches or know what's coming at him. He threw as a counter upstairs, straight down the middle. He threw as a counter to the body. He also threw it as like a, a looping punch through the to the to the body. And he would throw it as a nice good roundhouse up top. And these marry out of different right hands basically sets up for many different other attacks because you're so busy focused on the right hand, it allows you to be able to throw combinations. Here you start to see uh, Emmanuel start to fall for these feints. And I tell people all the time, when someone starts to fall for your feints, that's like getting them caught into the net. Now you can see other different shots. It'll open up other different opportunities. And that's pretty much what began to happen. Taylor was getting hit by that right hand that he couldn't see, and he started to uh, worry about it a lot. Here, he throws a jab to the body. He throws a right down to the body, and then he goes upstairs. Taylor, he was basically using good, superior mind control in this fight. Now, I was told a good jab is one. It's like, look, aiming down the barrel of a gun. You should not be able to counter on top of a good jab. And Lucas Matisse has a really good jab. Brings a whole different meaning to good defense is good offense, doesn't it? And that's pretty much what happened there. He even did the same thing with the right hand. The jab was a nice, good, stiff jab, and it pushed Taylor back to the ropes. Taylor wasn't going to the ropes because he wanted to. It was because Lucas was making him go to the ropes. He began to count, hook off of that jab. He throws a nice, good, straight hook, and it was a powerful hook. And every time he landed the hook, it knocked Taylor back. It either pushed him to the back of the ropes or it stunned him. Each jab, each hook stunned him. That hook is um, one that looked like a jab. And he turns it right over. So you're expecting the jab, but then it turns into a hook. And he these type of hooks landed all night. And it was very difficult for Taylor to be able to know what was being thrown at him. Um, you've seen him develop a good rhythm with the with the with the jab. He'll throw it once, he'll throw it twice, and then he'll throw a hook. He'll throw it once, he'll throw it twice, and then he'll throw his right hand right behind it. And his entire offense was set up around. That right hand and that straight, um, that jab, basically. Um, his skills and his power was pushing Taylor back to the ropes. Like I said, Taylor wasn't going back to the ropes because he wanted to. Lucas wanted him to the ropes, and he began to push him to the ropes with nice feints and nice good jabs. And when you have a good jab and a good right hand, it's easy to sell those feints. And that's basically what began to happen in this fight. It took uh, five rounds for him to be able to put Taylor where he wanted to, but that's why they call it a sweet science because it is exactly what it is. It's the sweet science of outthinking your opponent. And and Lucas has great punching power, which helps him out. Um, but he doesn't have the speed there. He doesn't have the power there, but he can be very he can be very savvy, basically. And here you see him. He throws a jab, and then boom, there's a hook. So he gets you thinking jab, and he, and he throws a nice good hook. And the knockout came just the way I said earlier. And Taylor's expecting the right hand. He covers up. Boom. Ta Lucas sees that, that body. He throws the nice hook to the body. It hurts him, and it sets up for these knockout shots. Um, again, he's expecting the right hand, so he covers up. The body's open. He throws a hook. It hurts Taylor, causing him to stumble backwards. Lucas doesn't even let him breathe. There was a nice good hook on the inside and ends the fight. This is D-Rod Zimmerman Boxing. If you like what you hear, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Leave a comment at the bottom. Tell me what you guys think about Lucas Matisse and who should be his next opponent.